Hey, kids, do you like wrestling? Well, we like wrestling, too. We are Shake Them Ropes here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Myself and Chris Novembrino kind of doing a lazy river of wrestling criticism, going through the news and whatever happened in stateside television wrestling. And also, you know what? Sometimes we just like to watch old stuff and talk about that, too. Love for you to give us a listen. If you haven't already, we are Shake Them Ropes here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Do you like wrestling trivia? Then check out the five-star match game, the Pro Wrestling Quiz Show. I'm Joe Gagne, and every episode, I grill three contestants with five rounds of power-packed wrestling trivia. We have over 30 evergreen episodes in the archives covering WWE, AEW, Japan, Mexico, and much, 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 much more. Play along at home and check it out today. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Hello, everybody, oh. and welcome to the Super Elite Cast. No, sorry, Super Jenkins. That's not... It's not till it's been announced in the public. Uh, I'm Joel, joined by David McDonald. It is uh, Monday, 25th September, 2023. This is episode 274, maybe the the last podcast. Yeah, the last one we we released before uh, New Japan is officially purchased by Tony Khan and becomes part of the Elite Verse. Yeah, that sounds like a, that sounds like a, you know what? Uh, uh, do it. Go ahead. <laughs> by by the way, he he already bought it, so. Um, all the uh, all the business dealings that have to go on, and shareholders and stockholders, that's already been signed off on, Joel. I don't know if you know this, but it takes like literally, like business transactions nowadays, they occur over uh, Venmo and Zoom. That's right. That's right. I didn't know if you knew that. Uh, we've got to credit our sources here. So this is from at Jim and Marvin Luda, uh, which is a Twitter account with... Let's let me say exactly. Uh, Jericho is the profile picture. 420 followers. It says, uh, okay. okay, I don't have many sources, but the few I do have, I trust very much. So when I asked about the new era in pro wrestling at AEW WrestleDream, I was told, I, I quote, everyone backstage is under the impression Tony Khan has purchased New Japan Pro Wrestling. That's a scoop. Mm. So there well, you go. Well, look. What do you want to do? Radar, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it really did. <laughs> all those, uh, all those a good run. staged. Yeah, you know what? I feel like we did, and I feel like the company as a whole. You know, yeah. uh, I think uh, Antonio Inoki would be proud. I think because uh, <laughs> Antonio, our, our uh, Twitter follower Antonio will be proud. Yeah. <laughs> He's been yeah, asking Antonio about this for ages. <laughs> he really has. He's been all over. He's been all over. Maybe he's the guy. He's the scoop. He's scoops, scoops Antonio. Um, uh, just to clear the air and set the record straight, of course. Uh, we, I, I got a bunch of text about 15 minutes before we were ready to go on. And everybody's up in arms with this uh, hot rumor. Hot. Coming in hot. Uh, I will say this. Uh, I don't necessarily think it's true. I know that's a shock to everyone. Um, and I'll go so far as to say, I don't know. I, I personally don't see it happening. Um, I could be wrong. I absolutely could be wrong, but, uh, we have heard nothing of the sort. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's as far as, as far as it goes in my eyes until we hear breaking news or, or we put it in the deli. That's right. I've already got a head on a spike on the gates of the deli from the last person that doubted us. I know. That was a funny video, though. I will say this. I will say that. Was. That was a good... A, no, like, I, didn't, uh, I didn't kick them out. I, I, as far as I was concerned, they could stay. It was, it was a good yeah, they jumped, they, they jumped on their own sword, right? Yeah. Um, for those of you who don't know, I, I, was there a bet? I don't even know. I don't it even know the full story. No, I, it, it was the, the stuff I was alluding to last week about House of Torture and Just Five Guys, which mm. I had... Maybe left Nailed. a couple Nailed. of breadcrumbs in, in the deli. And there was a yeah. doubter. There was a non-believer. Hmm. In the deli. In the deli. I mean, the deli is, is pretty legit. I mean, we're only putting shit in there that we fucking 
like we would, you know, cut off a nut if we were wrong. <laughs> and, and stuff watch, like that. I'll just be wrong. <laughs> everyone outside of the Discord server doesn't deserve to have. Could have put it on Twitter if you want to. Don't deserve it. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. We do not do that anymore. Like, here's the thing. Every once in a while we did. We did that with uh, uh, the English commentary team. Um, uh, and and I will say this, that um, we jumped through a, a couple hoops, more than a, more than a couple, uh, to make sure that this was uh, the exact route the company was going. And uh, we've heard it from uh, multiple sources, uh, those very close to the situation. So... Uh, I think uh, that in that regard, eh, you know, we just listen. We like the clout, right? We like the clout. <laughs> but yeah, most of the shit's going in the deli. Uh, and for those who don't know, the deli is a uh, the Discord, uh, a special channel that you can get all the hot scoops. Now, again, it doesn't cost anything. It doesn't cost anything. Just your soul. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> yeah. If you would like to uh, join the Discord and see the deli. You can't. I'm not letting Camp. anyone in, so fuck you. Yeah. Yep, we're done. We're done. We're done accepting invitations. Maybe we'll open it up. You know, it's like one of those torrent sites where they have uh, invitation only. And uh, hey, listen, there's only certain times that you can get in. I think that's what we're going to do. Instead of making money off of this, we're just going to uh, be paid Trade with... Trade exclusively in clouds. Yes, that's exactly right. That's it. That's it. If you, if you know, you know. And if you share it... Eh, won't have access anymore. Cloud currency. Um, it's yep. the new thing that everyone's talking about. What's that? Cloud currency. It's you yes. know, cryptocurrency's died on its ass. I'm I'm introducing cloud currency. I love it. It's a new term, and we invented it, and we'll take full credit for that. Yes, yes, absolutely. How you doing, Joel? How's how's life treating you? How we doing? How we doing? How we doing? How we got a lot of positive feedback for our show last week. <laughs> We did. Just Everyone fucking, loved it. Where we just yeah. hit record and just hit record and just thought, absolute shit. Do people like that. We should do more of that. We should do more of that. Hi, it's Editor Dan. Uh, usually I can hide uh, these kind of technical difficulties where Zencaster fucks up or the boys lose connection with each other. But unfortunately, I think mainly because uh, there's the news of Mr. Tony Khan and New Japan Pro Wrestling and all that fun stuff, I think the boys just couldn't be asked to help me out on this occasion. So it is what it is. Back to the show. Uh, what were we talking about again? Oh, yeah, you were talking about the, the off-the-cuff shows in Good and That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know what I was talking about. We had technical difficulty again. You know, you can't avoid it. We can't avoid it. Actually, I think, you yeah. know what? I think it is. I think it's my, my I leave my computer on all the time, so I, I probably just needed to reboot it, and it's probably my fault. Blame me. Just blame me this time, Joe. I blame Tony Khan. Apparently, he tried to hack into our uh, Zencaster session, and Replace mm. us with um, Tyler and Fred from uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Hungry podcast. Yeah, I mean they're going to take over. Incredible. They're going to rule the world at this point. I mean they got they uh, they got it made in the shade. Uh, boy, I'll tell you. Good luck to him. Well, look, here's the thing. It's not like <laughs> I don't know. I will say this: uh, where there is smoke, there is fire. I'll, I'll give you that. But I, I just. This is just, I don't see this happening anytime soon. Well, the, the fact that, that people are saying this that. This is not it, smoke. This is a fart. This is a, someone's <laughs> done a big fart. It's a little, everyone's looking for the fire, but it's not. It's just one person did a stinky fart. Hmm, I knew it smelled like cinnamon. Um, yeah, you know, what are you going to do? I, it's, it's at this point, uh, the fact that somebody's saying that he already owns it is, uh, I don't know. I think it deserves a. All right. Thank you very much, Howard. All right. Where are we going now? Uh, Mark says, thoughts on Mike Babock leaving Columbus Blue Jacket situation, Damon, and to both of you, what would happen if your boss asked to see the photos in your phone? <laughs> Mike Babcock, former Toronto Maple Leafs head coach. Uh, he was uh, he was fired by the Maple Leafs, right, Joe? And uh, like word got out that he really treated uh, players, especially younger players, Pretty poorly. He's an old school kind of coach. Uh, so now he's kind of, I don't want to say run out of the league, but like nobody's touching him with a 10 foot pole. And then either Rocky Romero runs to the Columbus Blue Jackets or, or something. Uh, 
he was hired as the head coach of the Columbus Blue Jackets before the beginning of this season. Now, again, training camp has just opened just this week, right? Or last week. Um, come to find out, he well, there's a, a pretty popular hockey podcast called Spitting Chicklets. Basically means you're spitting your teeth out of your mouth. Uh, so there, uh, it's uh, former NHL players that um, do this podcast, and it's uh, very popular within the hockey circles. Uh, they ab- passionately hate Mike Babcock. Absolutely fucking hate him. Um, and so I guess uh, one of them got a text saying that players, the coach is making them show their photos on their phone to, I guess, judge character, I guess. Um, so word got out. And then he's like, well, you know, I just do it to, you know, the uh, bonding uh, thing. And then it got out. Even, it was just made even worse. So before the season even started, Joel, the guy who got hired was let go. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, what a world we live in. Uh, yeah. So um, here's the thing with the photos. Uh, yeah, I don't think anybody needs to see anybody's photos, to be, to be quite honest. Uh, it's just, there's no reason for it. There's really not none that I can really think of. Now, again, in conversation, oh, you're married. Yeah. I got two kids. Oh yeah. Let me, what's her name? Uh, Jacqueline and Austin. Okay, great. Uh, what, uh, let's, let's, let's see what they look. Oh, this is the first day of school. Okay, great. If the person is willing to share the photos, absolutely individual photos, but to make a player go out and go through his fucking phone, that, which is the word is supposedly what happened. Uh, it's preposterous, preposterous. So that's the story. And how would I react? I would be go fuck your mother. How about that? Yeah. My phone photos is extremely boring. It is photos of my kids and screenshots of yes. new, new Japan. Cards. Swear to God. Yeah. Yeah. My, my phone probably has more, my photos probably consist of more screenshots than anything else. Um, just things I, I got to remember, Thing like I use it as like uh, <laughs> I use it as like fucking notion. <laughs> Seriously, it's like uh, I go I go back like ten photos to be like, okay, I did that, I did that, I did that, I did that. Okay, now these are the new things that I wanted to see or buy or whatever. Yeah, that's that's my phone too. So it would be incredibly boring as well. Uh, Andrew says, anyone worth picking up from the WWE releases oh, from a New Japan perspective? A big giant like Dabba Kato or Shanky? I'm sure he's just made those names up. Uh, classic catch says now that Matt Riddle has been released by WWE, given his problematic track record, how quickly will Rocky Romero try to book him for strong? <laughs> uh, he's probably already booked. Are you kidding me? He's already wrestled, according to uh, people. Uh, no. Um, look, um, they should do that. They should run a big gimmick match with like him and Chris Dickinson and Marty Scott and Mike Elgin and be like, it's just sort of like the the feast or fired impact thing like whoever grabs the briefcase at the top gets uncancelled or, <laughs> yeah. like or gets free lawyer support <laughs> free free representation for the rest of their lives um here's the thing with matt riddle uh i i i'm assuming he is a name right i i think he's a name right uh he does have an mma background which is always appealing to fans of this product um I'll give you a solid. I wouldn't be surprised to see Matt Riddle in a New Japan Pro Wrestling ring. I mean, when he was doing the indie round and he was working for, you know, Evolve and working for Ring of Honor and working for whomever. I mean, I think a lot of people were like, this guy would fit perfectly in New Japan, no doubt. Uh, And I agree. I think he would. I think he would be he would be good. Uh. Uh, the biggest problem is is that a he would not pass a drug test probably. <laughs> I think it's a safe statement to say. Uh, the risk of him bringing in uh, substances that Japan might frown upon might be uh, another issue. Uh, and third, his uh, history with uh, and again, I don't know all the details, but correct me if I'm wrong, Joel. We're talking about uh, some domestic abuse issues, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I do we? I, I don't know. I, I don't think the juice is worth the squeeze. And I will go so far as to say this: I don't know if he's 
like going to move the needle that much? Like, would he move the? Is is Matt Riddle a guy? Again, on paper, taking those issues aside, he would on paper he seems like a good fit. Correct, Joel. Uh, I mean, in terms of his technical qualities as a wrestler, sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you sure. Uh, do you think Matt Riddle's juice is worth his squeeze? No, I, I'm yeah. running out of energy to to do the, the big spiel every time right. Rocky tries to sneak someone into strong. Just so please, just don't save us the grief and yeah, just pass on this one. Give me any, pres- any any other guys like um you know Shelton Benjamin or who's the other one Mustafa Ali? There was another guy. Um, fuck, who was it? Oh. Everyone's going to be shouting at their devices now. Uh, Bob Backlund. No. <laughs> I'm gonna... Baron Mikel Cicluna. No, there was another one who was. Well, look it up. Complete dog shit. All right, let me see. Right. W- I'll w- stall. W- I'll just keep naming old WW. Johnny Rods. Oh, Dolph, Dolph Ziggler. That's ah. it. I like Dolph Ziggler. I do. Um, he likes you as well. Oh, well. thanks. Um, I like how he tried to uh, stylize his little logo. I like an old school Van Halen logo. Um, and I will say this, I, th- I think one of the coolest moments on live television for pro wrestling was that day after Raw where he cashed in and, um, uh, that, I thought that was pretty good fucking pro wrestling right there. Um, would he be a good fit? What I, depends on the money, but truth be told, I, I might take him over Matt Riddle. I might. Um, I think I because I think I think Dolph Ziggler could be more versatile, right? There's a lot more you can do with him than say Matt Riddle. Like Matt Riddle feels to me somewhat limited. Okay, great. He said, you know, he has a shoot background and an MMA background and all that. So, blah, 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 blah. Okay, we get it. Um, but, but Dolph, I feel like you could. You, there's a lot of ways you can go. Like I don't, I, I don't think you could just. You, you you had to plop him right in the middle of a fucking bullet club, <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I'm I'm I I don't have a problem with them taking a shot at Dolph. If uh, of the two, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I mean this is all hypothetical, so I don't think. I, one, I'm not sure those records are interesting. And two, I very much doubt New Japan have got the budget to. Ah, uh, for- Tony Khan does though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Good point. We've got to re-examine everything now. All right, he's signing them um, all. All right, let's move on then. Um, so we revealed on Twitter. Oh, oh. You know, we don't reveal stuff on Twitter. Uh, the new English voice of New Japan Pro Wrestling. So um, Kevin Kelly mentioned on Twitter that he's going to be wrapping it up soon, and I think he said his last show is going to be New Year Dash. Mm-hmm. And um, the new guy is Walker Stewart. Yeah. Who is someone, a name a lot of people won't have heard of, but from the little that we've heard, and, you know, hearing that you know, Kevin played a very active role in you know, hand-picking the replacement, I think we're in good hands. I'm, I'm excited. I think it's a refreshing change. I'm glad um, they went with someone who wasn't someone who'd been sort of chewed up and spat out by the WWE system. Uh, it's fresh. It's exciting. Um, I like... What I've seen so far, I think the most encouraging thing actually was when I did post on Twitter, the amount of testimonials there were from people who work with him or have worked with him and just like the glowing praise for mm-hmm. one, the quality of his work and two, his attitude All was right. really encouraging. It is. Like that's, that is encouraging. Um, you know, I think the one thing, and I was actually thinking about this while watching uh, the latest New Japan Pro Wrestling show from Kobe. Um, I think one of the things that helped Kevin Kelly connect with a lot of people that watch the product, and I know there's people that will nitpick and piss and moan and you know whatever. But to me, I think he's one of the the, the best things that have, has ever happened to New Japan Pro Wrestling when it comes to promoting a product. That being said. I think the one thing that he did so well was um, like he 
sounded like a fan of the product. And I think that's hugely important. Not to say that he was all pom poms and, but like, even when things sucked, like you could tell he was, and, and he would say certain things that, like, okay, you know, he, you know, he, it's not like he's this announcer that is untouchable and, and, and can't relate with us and is just trying to shove shit down our throats. Um, he's, you know, he's one of us, but he's a professional broadcaster, right? If that makes any sense. Um, and I think that's where he won. And, and, I, and I get the same kind of vibes uh, here with uh, Walker. I, I really do. So what a spot to be in, you know? Uh, here's a guy, never been to Japan, never, uh, you know, stepped foot in Cork and Hall. 21 years old? 20-something, yeah. Yeah, I think that was one of the considerations, if, if, if I'm not mistaken, is that, um, you know, no... Uh, nothing really to tie him down, so to speak, um, in the sense of, you know, not, he's not married, you know, no kids that he knows of, <laughs> um, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's like, uh, you know, he has that availability, I think is, is big. Two, um, you know, being a fan of the product does not hurt. And three, like I said, those those glowing testimonials that we've seen. Now, again, proofs in the pudding. But what a spot! Like just to to be like, okay, uh, I'm the guy. I'm I will be going to Japan a lot. <laughs> you know, that's uh, I'm I, not gonna not gonna lie. That's 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 the dream, right? That's the dream for a lot of us to be able to do that and get a paycheck and 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 do something that you love to do. So I think we're in good hands. I'm excited. I, I think it's a new, fresh face, and I think that again, you're not gonna go out there and just be, you know just like us, <laughs> right, when it comes to the broadcast. But in the same breath, you know, you do want that, I'm one of you people in the sense that I love this product, I love watching, I love covering, I love, and that passion will will will, will bleed through to our, our televisions and smart devices. So, yeah, it's a... Uh, man, what an interesting time. What an interesting time to be a fan. Um, look, if it doesn't work out, um, Flynn says, with the news that Kevin Kelly will likely be stepping down after Wrestle Kingdom, is it finally time for us to hear your commentary audition tape? So there you go. <laughs> They've still got those if, it, if uh, Walker bombs. So yeah, you, you know where to find us. Okay, Tony. so let's let's talk about this for a second. So obviously we did. We did do one. Um, and it was... We, we, were, we were invited to do one. Correct, correct. Um, and it was, uh, it was harder than it seemed, right? It was harder than it seemed because again, it's not like we're doing a podcast and we're just fucking, you know, talking about shit off the top of our heads. You know, there's gotta be a flow and there's gotta be, you know, that, and we, and we tried to do it, you know, he, you know, you were in China at the time and, um, yeah, it's, it, I don't know. I'll tell you what though, I'd be willing and you tell me. I'd be willing to put it on a private Discord channel or, or, or a private YouTube channel or something, something private or, or a Patreon. Yeah, no, yeah, there's got to be some sort of financial yes. goal for this. Yes. If a certain amount of money is deposited into our bank accounts, then we will release the tapes. Correct. That's, exa- that's exactly right. Uh, that's that's where I was going with this. So if we, um, I don't know what the price would be, but it, it, I'm not going to lie, it's going to be a lot because it might be a little bit embarrassing, <laughs> to be honest with you. But all right, uh, well, speak for yourself. Mine was mine was excellent. Yeah, you were good. <laughs> you were great, as always, as always. But yes, it, we did do one, and uh, it was, it, like I said, it was harder than than it looked. Um, anyway, yeah, good luck, Walker, Texas Ranger. Good luck. All right, uh, what else have we got here? So, um, oh yeah, the new New Japan World app is allegedly coming sometime this year. What What would you like to see from said app? Um, oh my God, what would I like to say? Well, first and foremost, stuff that is not on the network to be on, which again is not always the easiest thing to do. But uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The people who fucking own the channel own the tapes, right? Um, 
so it's not New Japan. It's uh, TV Asahi. Yeah, that one. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm like, oh, why can't we put this fucking shit up? Um, all right, so that's number one. But number two, just navigationally, uh, it's just horrific. And again, like, I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping that the site is a a little bit more user friendly. Uh, not in a little bit, a lot more. That search actually works. Um, that, like, I don't know, you have access to individual matches on a show as opposed to, okay, I got to load up the show. Now I got to fast forward through all this, or at least have it time stamped where the matches are. That would be lovely. Um, so not just so I have to just fast forward and hope I hit the lottery and get close to the match that I want to see. Um, I'm not going to fuck up and reset to the start. Oh god! If I jump to a part of the file that it doesn't like, yeah, yeah, it's look that that you figure that site was how long ago? Was it ten years ago? And it hasn't really been touched. You know what I mean? Like that. That aside, and is it a coincidence that they're suddenly revamping it just as these Tony Khan rumors? Oh, you, look at you! I tell you what, I would. I, I would like it to become less accessible. I want it to become more gatekeepery. Yeah. I want it to only be accessible for fluent Japanese speakers mm, and okay. <laughs> typers. <laughs> I want it just to be completely impenetrable and inscrutable for uh, a casual fan. I love it. I think I, I like the fact uh, that they're in- implementing a DNA screening to get access. You have to be uh, <laughs> a quiz. Now, there should be a quiz. There like should you have be. To answer a quiz about Summer Struggle 2021 before <laughs> you're able to access any of the recent content. Yeah, that would be. Well, you know that on YouTube, there's those ads that you can't skip. Yes. Well, I don't. I, I, pay for, like, I pay for. I pay for. Yeah, yeah. Oh, me too. But uh, like some of the uh, 36 minute long, uh, never six man title matches from oh, Pandemic really? Innovation, wow. which were good, but they, they sh- people should be forced to watch those before. Yeah. <laughs> accessing. Uh, yeah, anything. I agree. I agree. I, I, let's 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 gate keep more. Um, but thank God. I mean, it's about time. I mean, there is there is that that that. Whole system is in such a dire need of, of a refresh. It's it's silly. Do you, and let me ask you this: Do you have to log in every time, or does it save your password? It saves my password hmm. on the computer. It does, but on the Fire Stick, it doesn't. So every time I've I never fucking log in, so oh, it's unbelievable! Unbelievable. All right, so maybe we do. We get that. We get the something that we can look forward to there with uh, hopefully more matches and hopefully a better interface and. You know, it's uh, 10 years in the making. Good job, guys. Um, so, you know, usually we, we have a bit of a hiatus during the World Tag League. Are you reconsidering that with the strong possibility of a bad luck file like Jack Bonza team uh, joining World Tag League? No, but we've not had your thoughts on the whole Farley Dojo situation. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know 100%. I read a little bit of it. I, I, I'm, I'm familiar with it. I don't know if there's anything new. So for those of you do, that are not aware, Joel, would you mind catching up everyone on that situation, please? Oh, Christ. Uh, basically, the whole thing just seems like one massive Farle grift to um, line the pockets of him and his boys. Mm-hmm. And, and as I said, the fact... I don't know. Like I've not seen a World Tag League lineup, and maybe I'll end up eating my words if there is a... Uh, a, an entry of two dojo graduates from the Farley Dojo who end up taking uh, New Japan by storm. But if the only contributions from Farley Dojo to World Tag League are Jack Bonza and Bad Luck Farley, then that is just like the perfect encapsulation of what Farley Dojo is all about, which is basically uh, ripping off gullible and naive young wrestlers by pretending that there's some pathway to New Japan when there isn't, uh, and instead using that to pocket all the money and to put themselves over, uh, that would be just a, a brilliant proof of concept. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be one of the, one of the, I mean, he, I mean, if he's in fact pulling the old buzz Sawyer, um, yeah, that sucks. It, it's disappointing, but I can't say it's shocking. I mean, pro wrestling, ha- it's, you know, as, as weird as it sounds and as it's like, it's still pro wrestling. No matter how we try to not be pro wrestling, and on the surface, there uh, can be cosmetic changes, but at the end of the day, 
you still there there are still plenty of landmines in in pro wrestling and and if, and if this is one of them uh then yeah it's a fucking shame it is an absolute shame and then to be rewarded with with work within the said with you know uh, that's i i i just oh boy why do we always have to do this like why do we always have to talk about shit like this it annoys me to no end. Not the fact that we're talking about it. Not the fact that you bring it up. Not the fact that it's it's out there. It's the fact that like the company, like by their inaction, I'm not saying they support shit, but they can't be that fucking dumb. It. Yeah, yeah. They can't be that fucking dumb. They can't be blind to all of this and just be like, okay, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's just, come on, wake the fuck up. It's just a bad. Uh, whatever. Um, I, I, you know, it, but but I will say this: like there are plenty of stories, Joel, about wrestling schools that are just you know there to steal money, rip people off. I mean, one of the more infamous stories is you know the Monster Factory, which I live right near, or you you know yeah yeah Paulsboro, when it was owned by Larry Sharp. I mean, the big thing was. Like he got a cut of Bam Bam Bigelow's money, and again, I don't know the the particulars, mind you, but it was something preposterous, like lifetime earnings, like thirty five percent or thirty, like just something just ridiculous. Um, Buzz Sawyer, another one. Um, who did he train? I want to say it was Magnum TA. I could be wrong. Um. But, you know, he basically stole money from him. But no, it was Steve Austin. It was it was Steve Austin that, you know, basically ripped off. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's just one of those things. And and, and here's the thing. To, like, okay, so Hulk Hogan, he, he gets trained. You know, I mean, the guy, like Hiro Matsuda breaks his leg. I mean, what? What? <laughs> like, why? Would, why? Why? <laughs> just, I don't know. Oh, uh, pro wrestling. You've done it again. Uh, sometimes. Sometimes I wonder. I'm sure Richard Bells is no problem. <laughs> right. Or getting slapped open hand. Uh, yeah, hey, do you know Do you know after that incident, do you know who David Schultz wrestled at Madison Square Garden? Uh, no. Exactly. How about that Antonio Inoki? Oh. Right? It all comes, it all times, it ties in, right? Yeah, right after that incident, he uh, he wrestled. He did like a CM Punk. He beat somebody up and then <laughs> got in a ring, had a decent match. Oh, outstanding. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Did you see Will Ospreay versus Namichi Marafuji? So Derek says, did you guys catch Marafuji Ospreay match? Any thoughts? It was a great match. Ospreay made Marafuji look amazing, of course. And Marafuji seemed to turn back the hands of time. Yeah. Um, have you seen it? I did. I did. Uh, look, what, what, I mean, not for nothing, I'm going out of my way to watch Will Ospreay matches. <laughs> you know, he seems just to just want to have matches with interesting opponents, and why not have a great match to boot? You know, um, yeah, I thought it was really good. I mean, the I Marafuji has one of those chops that just you know, there's certain guys that throw chops as if they could kill a human being. And he's one of them. And they're just so loud, and they just have that crack to it. Fucking gunshot. Oh, and and again, there are there are guys who can lay in a chop, and oh yeah, that look like it's smarts. But and even Will's gotten pretty good too. Let's be honest. Um, yeah, no, it was that was that was uh, that was a fun, uh, exciting, and you know, let's be honest here, it's probably. Best Marafuji match we've seen in, in in quite a bit. I loved it. I thought it was really good. I thought I thought everything about it was good. I thought the energy was good. I thought the crowd was hot. Uh, obviously, in ring was great. It's um, it's an amazing. Room. A big dream match from for, for Osprey, who's a huge yeah. Marafuji fan. He's been asking for that one for years. Yeah, he sure has. Um, I mean, I think well, I, I, I I think people should go out of their way to catch that. That's how much I enjoyed it. I think people need to go. And it's out free on YouTube as well. Oh, is it? There's oh, no wow. Yeah. Well, then there's no excuse. I think it's. Uh, I think legitimately. I, I, I don't think I watched anything illegal. I think it was actually uploaded by Noah. Um, could be mistaken on that, but uh, yeah, 
good stuff. Uh, all right, then what else have we got? Oh, uh, Yuya Uemura. So Yuya Uemura was the uh, quote unquote unlucky um, recipient of the fired stipulation from the Feast or Fired Impact gimmick match. Uh, word on the street is that he is heading back to Japan this week. Now, that, from my understanding, is purely in terms of travel arrangements. I have no idea what booking plans may be, if any. However, it's hard not to look at the Ryogoku Kokugikan Sumo Hall Show uh, destruction coming up next month and thinking... Hmm. hmm, that might be an interesting landing point for uh, the re-debut of Yuya. Now, uh, particularly looking at that six-man title match with uh, Okada, Tanahashi and Ishii against Motosik Machine Guns and Josh Alexander. So given Yuya and Okada's history with Impact, and given that Okada was Yuya's send-off match before he went on excursion, right. that, that's one I'm circling. Uh, I don't necessarily know you is going to come back on that show, but if he did, I would be, I, I would expect to see him in a program with Okada. Yeah, that's that's a good start, right? Um, you know, with with everybody coming back, and it does seem like you know the wheels are in motion for uh, most of the guys to be back by the by, the, by you know come Wrestle Kingdom time. That's that's something that I think a lot of people can hang their hat on for excitement and future and all of that, which I think is very important. Now, again, let's not put too much pressure, but to imagine having a a a, a nice little program, or again, at least a match against arguably you know the best generational wrestler in the company. Um. I, I I think I don't think there's anybody that would turn that down. Um, now, the issue is is the fact that traditionally that would be uh, a loss. But I think everyone would love to see the match and B feels confident going into that match that it would be great. Like I, I'm not concerned one tiny little bit. Um, what I like to see. Uh, maybe an upset win. Sure. I think everybody would be totally stoked with that. Um, the likelihood of that happening might be low, but I don't want to, like, I don't want to sour my excitement for that with that knowledge of, well, this is usually what they do. Um, start slow and away you go. But imagine if they just put the fucking rocket ship on and, and, and said, okay, let's go. That would be, that would be really good, and I think that's something that's desperately needed. Um, let's 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 go just a smidge outside the box, just a, just a bit. We don't have to do it all the time, but I would love for one of these guys. Um, and again, you know, um, you know, we, we saw that with uh, Yoda Suji and and and, and uh, Naito, you know, his first match. So, I mean, we 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 have a chance of a big super debut and you know fingers crossed we, let's, let's fucking do it yep pencil in the calendar now bullseye shock coming 2024 uh, get ready for it yeah. um okay so that's that's all the news all right let's get into destruction all right. so it was a show from kobe world hall yeah Sunday, September the 24th. Yeah. There were 4,212 fans watching the show. Mm -hmm. I must say, Damon, I thought the quality of the audio on the English feed was appalling. Yes. It was really shit. And I don't know who to blame for that. I'm assuming TVS Ahi. Sound mixing, absolutely horrific. Some of the moments in the show that I've listened to with Japanese commentary, particularly the Kanemaru situation, Japanese audio, crowd absolutely losing their shit. English audio, yeah. you could hear a pin drop. Yeah. Ridiculous. Uh, the, the commentary, and again, this is not me having to go at Kevin and Chris. The actual, their performances were fine, but it sounded like both of them recording from inside a phone booth. There's no point doing it over the phone anymore. It's not worth it. 
just do it in post like they did with the other stuff. Uh, I so much, it was so bad. I regretted watching it live with English commentary. I wish I'd watched it in Japanese, so I'd have been able to, whilst not understanding the commentary, at least enjoy authentic crowd noise. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. It was it was rather distracting. Um, look, it, it you know it, Kevin's doing it from his house. Uh, and Chris is doing it from Tokyo in, a, in a, you know, maybe his out, maybe in an office and who knows. Um, but the, 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 it just sounded so, I hate to say it, it sound, it sounded unprofessional. It was out of sync. At least my feed, uh, my, mine was in the beginning. Um, and again, it sounded like Chris was talking into a fucking soup can and yep, yeah, it was, it was distracting and disappointing and not for nothing i had to turn it off and watch the japanese feed just because it was that distracting to me um that being said you're right i i think like i understand the idea of doing it live trust me you want i I, at every opportunity you, you it's better to do it live except when you know the situation and technology will get in the way. <laughs> it's just like, think of this. Kevin Kelly's doing a live broadcast in his fucking pajamas, uh, you know, in, in his office. You know, that's not the easiest thing to do. Just again, from a technology perspective, it was disappointing. Um, I'd rather, you're right. I'd rather them just do it in post, but okay. So be it. It is what it is. They did it. And, um, hopefully they, 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 they learn from that. All right. So let's get into the show itself. Then first match was, uh, Driller Maloney and Clark Connors defeating Kevin Knight and Tiger Mask, uh, six minutes, 57 seconds. So Driller pinned Tiger Mask following the full clip. So little tune up match there for the, uh, the junior war dogs there who are going to defend against the intergalactic jet setters at Sumo Hall. So, uh, about all. We expected here just a fairly dominant win. Kevin Knight looking good. Um, just a, yeah, a little appetizer for what's to come next month. Yeah, I mean, there's something that we talked about, I believe, on the preview show with uh, Tiger Mask and him lying down made the most sense, and Kevin Knight looking strong. Um, and again, we're gearing up for the the tag title defense. One thing I did notice though, so <laughs> as stupid as this sound, but this is where my dumb brain goes. Uh, so at the Philly show, Kevin Knight had those same orange kind of pants things on, right? But he had a stain on his pants that annoyed the hell out of me. <laughs> he, had, he had the same stain. He had the same exact fucking stain. And I'm like, does this motherfucker wash his pants? Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Uh, I was just like, oh. He just recommended good detergent. Yeah. Yeah, got to shout that fucking shit out. Come on. Come on, man. Uh, Yeah. Or or pay him enough so he can buy a second pair at least. Yeah. I mean, those things look like they've been through the fucking ringer. Come on. Uh, So, yeah, I didn't say that. What did you think of the match? I thought the match was pretty good. I didn't didn't mind it at all. I mean, and and I think it it delivered what it needed to. And Kevin Light looked strong. and, And Tiger Mask lost. Yeah, ticked all the boxes. Absolutely fine. Perf- perfectly acceptable opener. Good stuff. Um, all right, then. Second match then was a six man tag match with Taka Michinoku, Doki, and Sanada defeating Dick Togo, Yujiro Takahashi, and Evil. Uh, funnily enough, Taka Michinoku getting the pin over Dick Togo, eight minutes, 32 seconds with a Michinoku driver, too. Couldn't help look at this thinking this is to give. Taka some credibility to enter Super Junior Tag League oh. as Doki's partner. I, I mean, yeah, I mean, he got a, he, he beat, what did he, who'd he beat? Um, Togo, to Togo? Um, yes. Maybe. maybe. I mean, got to warm up Taka Michinoku, though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, if that's where we're at. Um, I, mean, it's got, I, I assume it's Doki and Taka, unless um, just four guys managed to bring in another junior partner for Doki between now and yeah. whenever they end uh, That's amazing. I was speculating Yo. I thought Yo might be a good fit in just four guys. Uh, yeah, 
I mean, I don't think I don't think anybody would complain. I mean, I don't think anybody would care, but I don't think anybody would complain. Um, I'll tell you, they would start complaining when we get into the inevitable Yo and Doki versus Sho and Kanemaru extended tag title feud. Which... <laughs> yeah, we know. Yo, Yo, Sho and Kanemaru in a tag feud taking us back to 2018. No doubt. <laughs> but you, like, I'm not saying I want that to happen, but you can see it happening. Like, that's that's pretty pl- plausible, isn't it? Yeah, it, was, it, it is. It definitely is. Um, look, I again, we all know why House of Torture is here. We all know what what s- purpose they serve. And again, it's not as uh, gross, you know, with them on top of a card as opposed to second match in. So, you know, I, I, it's hard for me to get upset over that. It, I wasn't at all. Um, and here's the thing too. I, I didn't hate the match. I didn't hate it. I thought it was, it was all right. Um, but you know, I mean, what do we, well, I don't think anybody's really losing a lot of sleep over this or analysis over this match. To be honest with you. Absolutely. That's absolutely that's absolutely fair. Uh, and then the third match was a ten man tag match with the Grillers of Destiny team, Jado, ELP, Hikaleo, Tangela, Tamatonga defeating the Bullet Club team, Ghetto, Gay Kid, Alex Coglin, Chase Irons, and David Finlay. So uh, again, just little sneak previews of the upcoming matches between ELP and Hikaleo challenging Gay Kid and Alex Coglin for the strong tag titles. And uh, Tangaloa and Chase Irons having their inexplicable singles match at Sumo Hall that nobody asked for, and uh, Tampa Tonga and David Finlay having their rematch. They're, I think my issue with this is it seems like all of these guys, particularly Tampa Tonga and David Finlay and ELP, are stuck in this purgatory where they're only allowed to have feuds with each other. And I think that's probably one of the biggest contributing factors to that whole situation feeling very stale, that it seems that they're not allowed to have extended feuds with any of, like, the uh, Japanese talent, which I think might go some distance to making things feel a bit fresh. It's just like, oh, all the foreign guys have to feud with each other, which is a bit boring. Yeah. And it's it just, I, I think it's an odd pairing, to be honest, but it just feels like, okay, Bullet Club is Bullet Club, fine. It does feel like it's, I mean, you know, there's not a, a ton to get excited over. Um, and I think you know, you look at Tamatanga and you look at ELP and 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 uh, Jado and it's just like uh, it's just a hodgepodge. It literally feels like we have nothing for you guys, so we're just gonna just lop you in this thing that it's going to go nowhere, uh, and uh, until we figure out something for you, <laughs> that's exactly what it feels like. Um, well, it feels to me that the direction is we're building towards ELP getting his rematch against David Finlay at Tokyo Dome and winning that never title. I think that's where we're going. And then maybe that frees up David Finlay to move up the cards. I don't know exactly what, but... You think, Ta- that, you, I, I think, you think Tama Tonga is like a gatekeeper here? Yeah, definitely. Okay. I, I think ELP has a lot of upside as a babyface. I think the crowd really love him. I think any time he's been put in a big spot, particularly in you know, a hot crowd like Tokyo or Osaka, they seem to really get behind him. And he's not had that definitive singles win yet. He's had a lot of nearlies. You know, Naito in the New Japan Cup, uh, Osprey. Was it Osprey? Yeah, it was Osprey in, in the G1 towards the end of the block. So I think they're doing a good job in sort of building up to that moment where ELP does finally get a big singles win. Um, but yeah, Tama Tonga sort of feels like the odd man out here. Yeah. If I were to tell you that this a year ago, that David Finley, the, the, the big feud, would be over the Never title. Would you be happy with that, or would you be disappointed with that? Uh, I think he is under-delivering yeah. relative to the role. He's Bullet Club leader, Bullet Club leader, historically has been doing bigger and better things like that. But I don't think he deserves anything bigger or better than that, because he's not delivered at a high enough level. The level, his output at the moment is commensurate with the never open weight title. So yeah, that's yeah. where he should be. Do you think, do you think G1 was kind of like 
that was the, the litmus test and he didn't pass? Um, yeah, I, I felt he underwhelmed there. I think he needed to do a lot better. To be fair, the whole of that C block was fairly rancid. It just it, it was not good. No. He's not the only person that under-delivered there. I thought well, Shingo actually had a, a pretty disappointing G1 by his own high standards. I thought Ishii was probably the MVP of that block. Um, bad Mikey did pretty well. Hanari was really good and, you know, until he got dropped on his head slash shoulder. Uh, so uh, maybe it's not fair to level those accusations entirely at David Finlay, but I mean, did he have a, a great match in the G1? The, the Osprey match was... I really enjoyed that. I thought that was a very good match. But again, when it's against Will Osprey, then I have to sort of hand wave that and be like, well, right. you know, it's Osprey. I, I could probably have a, a very good match with him. <laughs> right. but, um, yeah. yeah, no, I agree with you. It's been, it's been, you know, I was pretty high on it when it started, but uh, I, I just think it's, and, and again, New Japan is very good at warming people up calling people you know making getting that job done to to put them in a prominent spot when the time is right but yeah i i have absolutely been underwhelmed with with like there's a lot of things in bullet club that i like like you know the whole uh honestly the tag teams are the most interesting thing um but yeah boy david finley i think uh Lost a lot of shine with me. I don't know for whatever that's. Yeah, he's he's yet to have a match that is more than the sum of its parts. He isn't doesn't he's not yet proven to be capable of lifting an opponent to something greater. No, no, no. Now, if he's in there with with somebody who can who you know, I don't want to uh, carry is the terrible word, and I'm not going to say that. Uh, that uh, a dance partner that is uh, more than competent. Yeah, I mean, he can shine, absolutely. But, you know, I don't know. He's, it's just, it hasn't worked so far. It hasn't worked, and, and uh, I'll be the first to admit I'm taking a big fat L on that one. All right, uh, fourth match then was Yo and Leo Rush defeating Bushi and Hiromu. Los Dos Peligros, to give them their correct tag team name. Uh, nine minutes, 14 seconds. Uh, Leo pinned Bushi following the final hour. So, yeah, this is a little tune-up match for Leo to give him some uh, momentum, all-important momentum heading into Sumo Hall, where he's in that three-way match for the, uh, the junior heavyweight title. Um, I'm quite interested in sort of the direction for Super Junior Tag League in terms of these two guys, because Leo seems to be sort of more heel-coded at this point, so I don't necessarily know if he's going to resume that tag team with Yo. Um, Bushi, I'm assuming, is going to team with Titan going into Super Junior Tag League if Hiromu is still singles champion. Um, but that's good, good stuff. I always love seeing Leo Rush in Japan and it looks like just sort of the vibe I'm getting from him is that he's going to be doing New Japan for you know, a bit longer. So this is uh, sort of a welcome change from when he had his previous match uh, at the end of Best of Super Juniors, where it sounded like he was ready to sort of pack it all in again. So yeah. I'm glad that he's not, glad that he's back um, and always enjoy his work. I do too. Um, I, re- I, I, I wish that there was some type of long-term plan and or commitment from both parties. Um, the more I see him, the more I enjoy him. I think he's a, a, a an unbelievable talent. Um, uh, I'm I'm absolutely looking forward to him and uh it's him, Mike Bailey and uh Hiromo, right? Yes. That's correct. that's going to be fantastic. I think it has on paper to be one of the better junior matches we've seen in a long, long time, and we've seen a few. Uh, I don't Normally know. Normally I'm I'm like down on, on multi way matches. I'd rather have a singles match, but I have faith in those three men in particular that they will be able to deliver something really great. Yeah, and I think they'll be. I think you're looking at some creative guys, in in the sense that I don't think it's just going to be the usual toss somebody outside the ring and then two guys working in the ring and hitting all their spots and then whoosh, they take a power. I don't. I think they're going to be a little bit stronger than that. Um, I mean, and 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 trust me, if it falls into that. 
you know, it would be disappointing, but I think they have a lot more in them and a lot more creativity to come up with unique stuff. Um, and trust me, if it's going to be three guys in the ring and you're looking for that, and I'll put in air quotes, that car crash element, I mean, I don't think you have three better guys, <laughs> you know? Uh, I, I, I think it's going to be just tremendous. And, you know, I, like I said, I wish... It just always feels like we're on thin ice with Leah Rush. It always feels like that there's, uh, like, just like they're in this relationship, but they don't want to commit. Right? They don't want to admit to each other that they love each other. <laughs> like they just they they don't want to get hurt, or I, I don't know what the fuck. But you, you know what I mean? Like it just doesn't feel like there's that. Okay, going to put labels on the relationship. What's that? <laughs> That's what New Japan is saying. Stop trying to put labels on the relationship. And Leo's like, no, I want to want to define this thing. Oh, am I a boyfriend? What am I? What, right. What's going on here? Right. That's what it feels like. Uh, and I would wish that that would get rectified. But, you know, here we are. Here we are. Uh, but it's good that he's in the mix, you know, because I think he just adds an extra um, element to juniors and the promotion as a whole. Um, when, he's, when he's on shows and he's on the card and he's in a match, I just, I really enjoy him. Yes, uh, second is. Okay, fifth match then was Tomohiro Ishii and Kazuchika Okada, who were defeated by the Tum Duck team of Bad Tita and Zack Sabre Jr. So ZSJ getting the pin over Ishii, 12 minutes, 15 seconds with the European clutch. Uh, surprisingly great match here. I thought um, Okada and Zack went a lot harder than the, the match really necessitated. So I enjoyed that. Very delighted to see... Uh, Badu Tito back in Japan. I think he's got a tremendous amount of upside. Imring Art says, oh, thank you for the, the wonderful T-shirt design. I'm going to definitely get the ball rolling with that. <laughs> and he says, what is Badu Tito's ceiling as a performer in New Japan? So what did you think of the match? What did you think of uh, Teets in particular? Teets rocked. I thought he was the star of the match, to be honest with you. Um, like, I think he thoroughly impressed. I think uh, he looked like a beast. He looked... He, he... Uh, they, they, if if they would just do something with the poor guy, I think, like, I'm not saying he's singles title bound, but he, like, to me, he is, he could easily slide into, uh, and again, work to be done, but he could definitely slide into that kind of Jeff Cobby role of you know being a big, tough, just brute. I, th- I think he played that perfectly. Um, and that's not to shit on anybody else in that match. But to me, he stood out as a guy who, you know, look, looked strong and looked, uh, you know, when I say strong, I mean physically and uh, performance-wise. Uh, I was, I, I not that I was blown away, but I was, and, and not that I, I guess, I guess in my mind that I had, not written them off, but like I, you just kind of forget, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and you put him in a spot with, you know, against two two outstanding pro wrestlers. He's going to shine. Some people don't. He did. I I wish they would, they could find a spot for him. I really do, because he's a guy that undoubtedly deserves. And I, I don't want to scare you, but. Year end awards are right around the fucking corner. Uh, uh, he might get a vote for me for for underrated. Like he's one of those guys that just I, I, they just don't know what to do with him, and they put him in a faction, and I got no problem with that. But it's just like, okay, what well, you you got something here? Um, I would love to see more of it. I tell you what, okay, I've got a solution because I was going to say I would love to see Bad Dude Tito in World Tag League. But he doesn't have a tag partner because presumably Mike and Shane are going to be in World Tag League. How about we recruit two Tom Duck to be Badu Tito's partner in World Tag League? Okay, Luke Jacobs. Ooh. He can be hand picked by Zach at Royal Quest, and he could be like the muscle. Let's fucking go for TMTK, and then we can have Luke Jacobs, Badu Tito, World Tag League. Let's fucking go. Let's fucking have that one for free. You know what? Sometimes I think, you know, did you buy New Japan Pro Wrestling, Joel? 
Is that what this is? <laughs> well, funny enough, right? I was, I was getting stuff ready for the show just as Esther was going off to sleep. And she, she was looking at my laptop and there was a, a, a ridiculous tweet about someone saying Tony Khan is going to reveal that he's bought New Japan and Impact and Stardom and everything's going to be the elite multiverse. And Esther looked at this picture of Tony Khan and was saying, is it daddy? She thought, <laughs> she thought it was a picture of me. Oh. I was so insulted. <laughs> Get out of my house. Oh, my God. Wow. I love it. Joel Kahn. Joel Kahn. <laughs> Joel Kahn. Oh, dude. Love it. All right. Let's, let's crack on. No. Uh, sixth match then was the Pair PW 2023 Provisional Match, where the Challenger Show defeated the holder, Tai Chi, 30 minutes, one second, by a shock arrow. So uh, let's throw flowers at Booze, who called this one. She called the title change uh, when she was on the podcast last time. The match was, I mean, it's absolute house of torture shenanigans distilled into its purest form. So there's not much to sink your teeth into in terms of analysing the quality of the match. But of course, everyone is going to be talking about the big, unexpected turn, the uh, dramatic betrayal from one Yoshinobu Kanemaru, who has turned his back on just five guys who are now just four guys has joined House of Torture. So presumably uh, Sho and Kanemaru will team up and go have a, a, you would imagine, a fairly deep run in the Super Junior Tag League. Uh, but also now there's the added wrinkle of Sho being the KOPW holder. So I don't know what that range is going to look like. I've got a fairly good idea what it's going to look like uh, based on the evidence of this match. Uh, so a few questions on this. Uh, Clint says, what do you think is the future of just four guys? Will they bring in new members? continue as a quad or potentially merge into another faction. Shane says, what the fuck is the point of House of Torture? Do they sell a lot of merch and somehow have a strong fan base? Anyone that joins them somehow regresses as an in talent and I don't get the point of them. So Tai Chi versus Show. Damon, your thoughts, please. Um, you know, we're, we're handcuffing guys to each other. We're, we got wrenches. We got show funny faces. We got uh, uh, a turn that, you know, if you're a listener, we dropped enough fucking hints that that was going to happen. Um, if you were a member of our Discord and the uh, the deli, if you will, uh, you knew that was coming right around the corner. Um, I, and I'm going to say this with uh, all the respect in the world. To me, this is uh, meaningless, <laughs> to be honest. Like, Kanemaru, uh, a heel who uh, was in Suzuki Goon, uh, joined uh, Five Guys, and now he's in, once again, another more heel faction. Um, I, I, I can't say that I saw it coming you know, before news dropped. But in the same breath, it's like, okay, does it does it help? Like, here's what I think: Does this help me become more interested in House of Torture? No, it does not. Does this make me lose any interest in just four slash five guys? Um, a little bit, a little bit. So to me, it's a. a a, a loss. It's a, it's a negative. That being said, I'm sure that there are people that are thrilled and happy, and maybe it gives him a new lease on life and a new focus, and who knows? Uh, but I kind of agree with the person who said uh, it might be the kiss of death <laughs> when it comes to it. Now, keep in mind, we're looking at a guy who, you know, is is not 20, right? So, any upside you're looking for from Kanemaru, uh, that has long passed. Um, but that being said, uh, you we, he was a, he was a pleasant surprise because he was such a solid hand. the The issue is is that will you get that with House of Torture? And I and I and I have to say I doubt it. So once again, the thing that we liked most about him will probably probably be put on the back burner. While he grabs wrenches and nut shots and spits his Suntory whiskey uh, 
it, it, I don't think it moves any needle whatsoever. None. Zilcho. Uh, so it's a, it's in it's it, it, seriously to me this is Pez Watley turning on Jimmy Valiant. <laughs> right? It's it's fourth match fodder, and 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 here we are, here we are. It does feel like uh, just four guys need to have something to give them a bit of uh, I don't know a, a bit of uh, a positive because the, the way the match ended with them all sad in the ring and handcuffed and looking like a big bunch of losers, despite the fact that uh, the current IWGP World Heavyweight Champion is their leader, who he, he was a uh, yeah yeah. I don't know. It feels like they will need to recruit someone to kind of redress the balance. And, and the idea of a guy stealing a belt, and it's not like we haven't seen that uh, quite a few times in New Japan, let alone pro wrestling itself, just seems like such a boring and tired. <laughs> like it's just, oh, I, don't, I don't know. It does nothing for me. Um, Sonata, like, <laughs> let me ask you this. Would you have a problem with him dropping this title? No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. He should and will drop it. And you're okay, evil House of Torture being once again uh, top of the card. You're okay with that because Sonata just has done nothing. Uh, no, I'm not okay with that. I, I, I am the resident House of Torture slash evil apologist. I don't think it's got any business uh, main eventing a sumo ball show. Yeah. <laughs> Even if I go that far. I mean, it makes sense narratively. I thought it sort of it, it worked pretty effectively with him getting that surprise run to the G1 semifinals. But um, yeah, lumberjack, ma- evil Sonata lumberjack match, Sumo Hall main event. Come on, yeah. Well, Come ticket on. sales apparently speak to that, right? Isn't it? I'll, we'll call it sluggish at best for this show. And I know this is sort of it's traditionally a bit of a dry spell uh, for, for New Japan. It's sort of the, the sort of post G one lull where we know what our main event's going to be, and everything is just kind of going through the motions and trying to create the illusion of intrigue where there isn't really any. But even so, like that's not even trying, is it? I don't feel it is. Like, trust me, I can go down that roster and name. Twenty guys, just literally off the top of my head, that they can warm up and be a better fit for a main event. But they they chose this route, um, and 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 the problem is is that I don't care about either of them. Like Sonata, I think is better than last year's Sonata. I think uh, it is a definite improvement, but the bar was so fucking low that. Okay, you had nowhere to go but up. So the new coat of paint and a new faction and all of that um, at the time felt a little bit, you know, okay, maybe he can capitalize on this and we can get rolling. It has been just a slog. Uh, this feud, it just I, I, I just can't get into it. I can't get into either guy. And that's saying something. You know what I mean? Like we're going into a main event. Uh, and it's not like they haven't done lumberjack matches before. I'm not the biggest fan of them, but okay, it's not like they haven't done them before. That being said, I don't. I. 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 Uh, here's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for a double disqualification and the belt gets held up. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm hoping for. I'm praying for that because honestly, my other option is a evil winning, and now I got to put up with this, the House of Torture nonsense at uh, top of the card, or B. You know, just a guy who just, I don't know, he's just there. Um, so, whatever, I, I mean, it doesn't sound sexy to me. And again, the ticket sales kind of kind of speak to that. And I know that we talk to a lot of people in Japan, and I'm not saying that we're speaking for the entire country, mind you. But I think we talk to enough people that are that have access to going to these shows that are just like, I'm good. <laughs> I'm sure I can find something better to do. Yeah, I think this Sanada Reign has hit a very hard and relatively low ceiling. Yeah. I mean, I say relatively low as compared to other world champions 
over the last few years. Well, let's do it. Um, let's do it. Let's do this. Let's go right out of the right out of the gate. Evil or Sonata? Who's who had a better reign? Oh dear, um, Sonata. I mean, in terms of in-ring quality, Evil's was too short. I mean, Woody had one successful defense against Hiromu, mm-hmm. and that was that. And it was hamstrung by doing a very heat-dependent um, formula in front of clap crowds. So I. Again, I've, I've said this till I'm blue in the face. My the, the hill that I will die on is that evil turn and evil rain would have gone over much, much better had it not been for the pandemic. But, you know, that's a hypothetical. Right. Is Sonata the uh, evil side? Let's take evil out of the mix. Let's let's just go with fan uh, fans in the building. Name me a worse world champion. Than Sonata for New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think it's sort of on par with the Ibushi reign from a mm. couple years ago. Okay, so now, and and I'm kind of in, in in your corner on that one. Like like that's that's a good answer to, to me. So now I'm going to pose a question that goes to the top of the food chain. We just mentioned three guys. That, again, if we're taking out the clap crowds, three guys in the history of the promotion that, boy, it's a struggle, right? And even if we just do modern times, you literally name three guys under the watch of this management regime. Is that a problem? Yeah, I mean, I've always maintained that. Part of the prestige of the IWGP title and what made it so special was the fact that guys like Ibushi and Evil and Sanada would not get to hold it. And now it seems like we're sort of playing past the parcel with all these kind of sort of upper mid carders. Yeah. And that has, I think, taken a bit of the prestige away from the belt, amongst other things. Uh, look, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you. I think a, a lot of the issues I ha- I'm having with New Japan right now does center around this management group that I don't know. I just like like do you think this uh, this 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 group has been a positive for the company? Now financially, they actually I uh, t- like the positive is is that they got this company through the pandemic. And and it was tough. And there were a lot of unhappy people in that company, but they managed to keep it afloat. So that's a positive in my mind. The negative has been a lot, <laughs> right? A lot. I, I, I struggle giving a letter grade higher than a C for this management group. I think it's been hamstrung by the pandemic. I think that sort of delayed all the returns that they were hoping for by at least a year. And I think they're now playing catch up for that. Okay, but, um, but so, I don't know. Like, okay, I understand the pandemic and I understand that the fact that they are a revenue based company, ticket sales being the primary source. Get that. Like, the I like they're a pro wrestling company, and the fact that okay, great, they couldn't run shows in front of people. I totally understand that. That doesn't mean creativity has to be fucking tossed out the window, or at least have a plan out of the gate. Look, when 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 we kept saying we're back, we're back, we're fucking back. Guess what? I and and again, hindsight is twenty twenty. I, I honestly thought we would be out of the gate quicker, hotter, and we we wouldn't be having conversations like this. Like that's yeah. When we're, we're saying we're back, we got the the uh, cheering crowds back, we got the travel back. I was not thinking, yeah, let's have an extended Sonata <laughs> <laughs> right. world title reign. Yeah. Right, I didn't know that was in the mix, and like 
Like you had plenty of time. It's like what, what you had plenty of time to be creative. You had plenty of time to fucking think about. Okay, where when this ends, where do we want to be? Where do we want to go? What what's the plan? And it doesn't feel like it. Like even with something as stupid as the website, you mean to tell me during the pandemic we couldn't work on the website? We couldn't work on New Japan World. Yeah, you know what right. I mean. All right. All right. No, enough of my bitching and moaning. All right. All right. Because there was some good stuff on this show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what have we got? Okay. So the seventh match, IWGP Tag Team Championship match. So Bishamon, Yoshihashi, Hiroki Goto successfully defending against the uh, TMDK Challenger Team Shane Hayes and Mikey Nichols. Twelve minutes twenty nine seconds. Uh, Yoshihashi got the surprise pin over Mikey with the Itaraki Kari, the crucifix bomb. Um, this one went, is really good, surprisingly short, though. I mean, 12 minutes was not really enough time to get cooking to the extent where I think we're going to get another match, a more conclusive match between these two teams at some point. Uh, William says, who should be the next challengers for Bishamon? Multiverse A says, with TMDK losing, who do you see challenging for the titles at the Dome? Aussie Open, a team from Impact, since that relationship seems strong. Um I'm not going to ask that second question because it's boring. Um, so, yeah, I was just thinking, like, what do we see as the future for the tag title division? Because if we're using the blueprint of last year, where we had FTR coming in, making a challenge, winning the titles, was it a Royal Quest? And then holding them, not entering World Tag League, and then handing them over at Wrestle Kingdom. I could see something similar happening with Aussie Open. And Goto has been hinting at wanting to face a particular team. And I think he's talking about Aussie Open because I think Bishamon need to get the win back over them. Because they, I don't think they, no, they lost to them, didn't they, when, in that mm. great match they had earlier in the year where Carl Fletcher got busted open and all that. Yeah. So question is where that happens. How long are we dragging this out? Because I think Aussie Open are cha- challenging for the AW tag titles coming up soon okay. and if they win those that complicates things i definitely think they are going to have a, a new japan sort of match at some point so it could either be i can see it happening at royal quest three i could see bishamon versus aussie open there from my own personal preference i would rather they just have a killer match bishamon win bishamon get their win back and then we say bye-bye to aussie open but it would not shock me if aussie open win Hold the titles. I don't think there's a snowball's chance in hell of them being in World Tag League. Can't see that happening. Uh, and they hold it until Wrestle Kingdom, and then at Wrestle Kingdom put over the World Tag League winners. Who would that be? I don't know. I mean, Bishamon winning for a third consecutive year. I think we can probably do something more interesting than that. Could it be TMDK? I mean, could we get a sort of redemption run for them where they win World Tag League and then challenge at the Dome and win the titles? Could it be someone completely out of left field? I don't know. Like, Shingo and Suji or uh, a, a, another United Empire team like Okana Cobb or Okana Hanare? Could it be Hikolo ELP? Probably not. Could it be the War Dogs? I think that would be very cool. I'd like to see that. So there's quite a few different directions they could go in with these tag titles. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, War Dogs to me is pretty appealing. I would not be surprised, Joel, if we see once again another three-way with FTR, Aussie Open, and Goto and 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 uh, Yoshihashi, I would not be surprised if that is the end result. Um, and I wouldn't complain about that. Like I think that could be very good. Once again, do what I prefer just a singles match at Wrestle Kingdom or you know a regular old tag match. Yeah. Um. But I wouldn't be surprised to see them in the mix. Uh, I don't know what Aussie Open is doing in AEW, um, nor, quite honestly, do I give a fuck. Like comedy jobbers. Yeah, well, the, according according to uh, Wembley Stadium, yes. But uh, like any one of those two teams, I would be completely fine with. And if you want to throw in the War Dogs, I'm I'm, I'm totally good with that. Um, aside from that, yeah, it would have to be like. Like I'm not gonna go Cobb and Ocon. I'm 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 not gonna fucking go down that road again, uh, because apparently Young o- Bucks. What's that? Young Young Bucks. No. You think Young Bucks? Well, uh, I don't know if they. I don't think they hold any championships in AEW at the moment. So politically, that would be easier 
Yes. To, uh, yeah. with. I mean, maybe Gotto was talking about the Young Bucks. Maybe he wasn't talking about the comedy jobbers. Who knows? Nah, I mean, I would be shocked at that, but I really would. I would be shocked. I would Let's put it this way. I would be shocked if Young Bucks are even on the fucking show. Um, I mean, if Tony has his way, he'll be, they'll be on. But, you know. uh, yeah, I don't think uh, – I think it's between those – three and I wouldn't be surprised if it's uh all three in one match. Okay, kinder surprise. Um okay, so eighth match was a special singles match uh between Shingo Takagi and Great Okan. So Shingo beat Okan uh twelve minutes twenty seven seconds last of the dragon. This is pretty good. I mean Okan is a very frustrating person because it feels sometimes he's sort of sleepwalking through matches. And then you see matches like this and the like the match he had against Ibushi in the G1 a couple of years ago. And he's really capable of turning on. And you think, oh, that is more of the great Okan I want to see. So, I mean, first of all, Shingo, I mean, this feels like we're heating up Shingo for something. I don't know what. Uh, Adam writes in and says, apart from Bushi, Shingo is the only LIJ guy Sanada hasn't or uh, defended his title against. Mm. Do you see Shingo challenge at Power Struggle? And if so, should Shingo win the title and face Naito if it don't? To me, that feels like a bigger and better match. Sorry, it's Tanada. Uh, so, interesting to note that Shingo also has a singles match with Ishii at Wrestle no, uh, Royal Quest 3. Mm-hmm. So, I wonder if he's not just going to pick up another win there and then with those two singles wins under his belt, challenge for something. I don't know what. I don't know if he's going to go after the US title I don't know if he's going to go after the heavyweight title, but it feels like Shingo is being quietly heated up for some sort of singles push or singles challenge. Yeah. Um, and as for Great Okan's Cactus Max says, interesting to hear Kevin's commentary on Great Okan and him losing again. Does he have much of a future in the company given his lack of progression in the past couple of years and all the younger stars that all seem much more infused by? And yeah, I think there's a good point there. I feel that. Uh, Suji and Uma and I were uh, lapping him at this point. And, you know, going back to when he first made his re-debut, remember, remember he had that great match with Naito where he eliminated him from the New Japan Cup and I was raving about him and you know, saying he's the future, blah, blah, blah. Feels like he's pretty sort of plateaued here. Yeah. And it is not helping him seeing guys like, you know, Umino grasping that brass ring and Suji knocking it out of the bark and Uemura waiting around the corners to come back and even seeing guys like Oiwa and Fujita looking really impressive on their excursion. So, uh, yeah, thoughts, please, on where are we going with Shingo and what the fuck is up with Great Okan? Yeah, I mean, I, I think heating up Shingo is never a bad idea and a bad thing. Um, but, yeah, I mean, singles matches mean a lot, you know, and people who get wins usually are put in a uh, position to either challenge for a title or something special. So, yeah, I think I think... I don't think anybody has a problem with that. Um, and I think that's where we're headed with Shingo. So no no complaints there. Uh, Okan, I, I, I don't know. I, I And I say I don't know in the sense that I, I, don't, I don't know where he went wrong. I don't know how exactly he dropped the ball. Um, pro wrestling is weird. Pro wrestling is... is Every man for himself, uh, and I don't. I don't know what he did wrong because to me, he felt like he was one of those guys that had not only an interesting gimmick, but a way and an aura about him that people seemed to pick up on and enjoyed. Add to that the 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 mainstream press that he got. That moment was when it felt like all was lost. And again, it is just me being throwing shit against the wall, but I just find it to be an unbelievable coincidence that like it felt like his flame was extinguished right around that time. Um, I don't know if that's jealousy. I don't know if that's I don't know what that is. I don't know. But for whatever reason, it feels like everything that we had projected and everything that we had hoped and everything that we had um, thought was just a slam dunk no-brainer 
just hasn't come to pass. And I don't think that's any fault of his own. Like, to me, he's a guy that has done everything he can. Um, and and you're right. There are times where it feels like the guy might be, as you called it, sleepwalking through a match. But, I, like, if you talk to him, don't you think, like, if you could have a legitimate heart-to-heart with the guy, he's got to be frustrated. He's got to be disappointed. He's got to be throwing his hands in here being like, well, what the fuck? What? 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 What do I got to do? What's 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 why? Because to me, at one point, he was arguably one of the most ta- at least talked about or hottest guys in that promotion. Like at, at like it could have been a week long stretch, but there was one point where it felt like everybody was on fucking board, and that has completely died. Now, do I do I think that he should have gotten the win over Shingo? Okay, maybe not. But why was he the one chosen to be put in that position, I guess? Again, we have a roster chock full of talent and people that could easily fall into that slot. And yet they decided to do it with him. And I, and I, and I guess I question that in the sense of it's been a long time. And yeah, I would be concerned about being lapped. It's a lot of, of, of like what we talked about with Hanare before. you know, And those young lions show, yo. Uh, you know, uh, people that were just back on coming back from excursion, lapping Jay White, you know, a juice. Um, a lot of these guys that we were just like, you know, not for nothing. It's it. I would be looking over my shoulder, and if I'm Great Ocon, and again, the company's very good at heating people up, but at this point in time. Like I here's what I don't understand. And help and, and 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 if I'm just a dumb fuck, by all means, I'll I'll wear that. But Joel, why is it that at every fucking turn we have situations like this where it's like takes forever to fucking happen and it and it might not ever happen. I like I don't understand that that thinking that this promotion does when it comes to stuff like this. Yeah, and I'm starting to sort of retrospectively think in all these title reigns we've had with guys like Shingo, Evil, Sonada, Ibushi. Would it would it have been the worst thing in the world if one of those had gone to like oh, right. I don't know. I'm not saying he's a world champion material, no. but I just they're not really giving him much to work with, are they? Name me a singles match that he's won. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? Like, okay, eventually. And and here's the thing, too. It's like eventually fans kind of just hand wave at, at a certain point, right? Like, you're just like, okay, well, he's fucking, you know, he's, you know, you just hand. And they do that to a lot of guys, it seems like, in, in weird ways. This is Okan's deal. But, like, let's be truthful here. How long has, like, and I'm not saying that you give him the fucking belt at any point of these matches, but, you know, Goto kind of had that label on him, too, where it's just like, okay, is this guy ever going to fucking win? Like, who cares if he even challenges? He's not going to win. Um, I don't know. Like, uh, there comes a certain point where people just kind of tune out and just don't take him seriously. And, and. I don't understand the fact that now we have to rehabilitate a guy who has lost literally every single match that he's had, um, or at least I can't remember one that he won. And now if they wanted to heat him up, like we have to go through this whole reconditioning phase. I just, I'm just like, wh- I remember when uh, he and Cobb won the tag titles and they looked great. looked like it was going to be you know, a really hot run. And then they ended up losing them. Indirectly to fucking bad luck, Farley and Chase Owens, right. and they didn't get pinned for them. Right, and then we just we never went back there again. Like, like whose mother did he fuck? That's what I want to know. <laughs> like, like who, how, who did he do Statistic, wrong? Probably lots of people. They're right there. He's out point. shagging. Yeah, you know what? You're right. Him and Ve- you know what it was? It was probably those Vegas pictures. Probably those Vegas. <laughs> yeah. You think yeah, so? Wrong. You think that had something to do with it? He had a little bit too much fun. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that's necessarily in line with the squeaky clean image that mm-hmm. uh, Bushiro might like from their top guys. Who knows? Oh, all right. Yeah, that's to do. Okay, let's continue then. Uh, we have 
Uh, night match, special singles match. Tetsu Naito defeated Jeff Cobb. 40 minutes, 17 seconds with the Destino. I thought this was really good. I think Jeff Cobb is great. Uh, every time I see him in a big spot like this, I think, wow, he's really good. So this kind of had sloppiness, but in a good way, that kind of sort of reckless sloppiness. I think they've got good chemistry. I think Jeff Cobb is an underrated promo guy, underrated shithouser. Uh, so I've really enjoyed the dynamic between him and Naito. It's a really fun match, a lot of really creative counters. Uh, I've heard rumours that Jeff Cobb might be leaving as well. I think it would be sad if he did. Um, another guy who I just think it's a shame that he seemed to get his big biggest push with the company during the pandemic. Uh, I think he deserves a, another crack at it now that we've got the, the cheering crowds back. I think he's very, very good, Jeff Cobb. Um, uh, yeah, and, and there's also the discussion about this sort of dead period, is there any point having proper briefcase defences? Because nobody believed Jeff Cobb was ever going to win this. You know, even at the nearest of near falls in this match, I don't think anyone was thinking that Jeff Cobb had a chance. Is that something you can remedy? Is that just sort of a a structural issue that we just have to deal with? If you want to have the big prestigious G1 Climax winner going on to challenge for the title at Wrestle Kingdom, is that just something we have to live with and just try and accept this for what it is is just you know giving the g1 winner something to do without there being any real threat involved um i don't know i don't mind this stuff i mean i've made my piece with it i i don't hate the uh, sort of autumn period as much as uh, other viewers do i think it's okay it's it's, it's fine yeah I, I i do too um and i did enjoy this match a ton uh and, and i i know i've said it before i, I you're right they do have such like I feel like a real good chemistry in in the sense of you know it's like two pieces of sandpaper being put together you know it somewhat fits but boy it's 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 scratchy to say the least right um yeah Jeff Cobb a guy who made the most of the pandemic right and those shows and all of that and I, you know I'm, I, I'll say it what does he have to show for it? Like, how was he rewarded? How was like, you know, I, there's another thing that I question. Um, again, we can't push everybody totally understandable, but again, a talented, here's something I learned recently. I forget where it might've been when I just hopped into the discord for like two seconds. Um, he's over 40, Right. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, forty-one. I think. Okay. Forty-one. That's that's, uh, yeah, 41. that's old. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's. I think that's saying something. His power moves are just off the charts. Like to like. Uh, if his biggest run as a singles guy is the fucking Matanda Queto thing at Lucha Underground, that would be criminal. Yeah. It, it really is. I think he's he's a, such a talented guy. And again, I love just his power moves are just are things that that have people jump out of their seats. Um, would I love to see him a little bit more? Uh, I'll call it a little bit more Gary Albright in him. Yes. Would I love to see him just physically dominate people? Yes. Um He's a guy that his entire run in New Japan has been, uh, to me, uh, what could have been. What could have been. Not saying you give him the big boy belt, but a secondary belt? Come on. Really? Throw the guy a fucking bone. Uh, But that being said, I thought the match was fantastic. I thought Naito uh, was... I, I'm, I'm at the point where I, I do worry about Naito, but I you could say the same. Literally, we could go back to Madison Square Garden where they're dropping each other on the fucking head on their on their heads, him and Ibushi. Um So I'm not going to be the, the fucking safety police, uh, but man, he just feels like you know how like uh, Hiromo used to be, or I'll even go so far as to say. Uh, one of the, the biggest appeals of a guy like Sabu would be just the sloppy slash dangerousness of him. 
um, like from a heavyweight perspective, like that's the vibe I get from Naito. Like, like you don't know if this move is he's going to hit it or if it's just going to fucking just blow up. Uh, but even then, it's going to look pretty, pretty, pretty great, uh, and somehow intertwine in the match. So, um, yeah, I really like this match a lot. Um, obviously, it was my second favorite of the night. Yeah, totally with you on the sort of exciting sloppiness of Naito, which has always been a factor, to be fair. Like, you know, even if we go back to the sort of classics with Kenny Omega in like 2016, 2017, there's always been that edge of sloppiness that had to extra sort of thrilling uh, danger to his matches. But that's just sort of increased exponentially over the last few years, which has arguably made me enjoy his matches even more mm. so. Uh, definitely, it's not necessarily a negative there. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the 10th match main event, IWGP US UK Heavyweight Championship match with Will Ospreay successfully defending against the challenging Yota Suji, 27 minutes, 51 seconds with the Stormbreaker. Uh, Louis says, when it comes to big time singles matches for a big show, New Japan always delivers. Would you guys agree with how the main event match went? Um, yeah, I thought the match was outstanding. Uh, a nailed on match of the year candidate. Pretty much flawless in terms of the in-ring work, the story they were going for with Suji being a, a, a matter of feet away from the win, you know, when he speared Osprey out of his boots and just sent him flying across the ring. Uh, and even, you know, after he'd emptied the tank, he showed his his heart and his guts getting back to his feet, doing that zombie walk towards Osprey, who was visibly rattled by that. And Look, for Will Ospreay, you just copy-paste what I say every time he's in a big spot like this, or, or any spot for that matter. He is the best wrestler in the world by a country mile. He is lapping the competition at this point. There's no debate there for me. He never fails to deliver. It, you never come away from a big Osprey singles match saying, oh, well, that was a bit disappointing. That one over- underwhelmed. It doesn't happen. No. That That is the, the fogging uh, standard. Uh, and I'm just saying all the same shit I usually say. It will be a, a terrible loss for New Japan if he no longer works with them regularly next year because there is nobody in the world better about finding the strengths of an opponent and, and uh, a shining a massive spotlight on them while hiding whatever weaknesses they may have. Like He worked his ass off here to make Suji look like a killer, even though Suji lost, with the, 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 you know, the presumable remaining time we have with Osprey as a full-time guy in New Japan. We've got to get our ducks in a row, have him work with... Whoever needs that elevation, um, excuse the pun, we've got Zach at Royal Quest. And I think it should be Osprey putting over Shota at Wrestle Kingdom. I've said that before. The story's there. Shota's lost the will three times uh, already since uh, 2021. There was a Red Throat Uprising, mm-hmm. Royal Quest 2, historic crossover. So let's have these two high up the card. I don't know, semi main event in the Tokyo Dome. Pass the torch to Shota in what I have no doubt will be a brilliant match. Um, no, no, I've been talking about Osprey's ability to have a, a very good to great match with pretty much anyone, whether he's uh, a cajoling, uh, a waning Kenta into greatness during the G1 or, you know, dragging a guy like Tangaloa, kicking and screaming to something actually watchable, uh, giving guys on the brink like ELP and Finlay arguably the best matches of their careers. Either way, like most of the time he's doing the heavy lifting. This was not the case here. No. This was not the case. Yota Suji kept up with Will Ospreay, move for move, beat for beat, in some really high-paced, very ambitious, intricate sequences. Did not miss a step. Uh, not only that, he brought the fire to this match. He he oozes charisma. The crowd absolutely adore him already. They are living and dying by this man. He's got one of the coolest movesets in the company. He can do the, the flashy, epic main event style already. I, I knew it was good, Dave. Like, I've been saying it since day one. Uh, I was shouting from the rooftops after last year's Royal Quest when he had that impromptu match with Ishii to uh, to get ready because this guy's better than any of you were prepared for. I'm the high man on Yota Suji. Make no mistake. And still, and still, he managed to blow me away here on just how good he was. Yota Suji, he's not a guy. Everyone's saying that he is the guy. He looks nailed on to be main eventing Wrestle Kingdoms and more Dominions and tournament finals for years to come. The crazy thing is, right, this guy's got three singles wins right. since his comeback. Right. Three. Right. He's been Chase Owens, Shota Umino, and Gabe Kidd. That's it. 
I, I, he's been put in some pretty big spots so far, but he hasn't even sniffed what we typically define as a push. And already, he just seems like a supernova waiting to happen. New Japan, they've got their finger on that button. I don't know when they're going to press it, but this guy, he, he is ready for everything they can and should throw at him. He is... He's ready to gene blast all over our faces. <laughs> gene blast. Um, look, I, I don't want to parrot everything that you've said, but I, I, I can't agree with you more. I just, like, like, we will look back on these years with Will Ospreay in New Japan Pro Wrestling, and, and, and we will just be thrilled to know that we we saw this, you know. It it's an amazing run. It's an amazing. This year has been absolutely off the charts. Uh, this match had everything to me. To me, it was it was just it. Here's what it was. You had a you have a guy who every single person he steps into the ring with has their best match, and we've said that. A lot, right? And and it runs the gamut. Like it just is an amazing thing that not only does he make his opponents look good, he puts people on the map. Like he just he's just that good. Like and and I I don't understand why people want to swim upstream for that. Like, look, there are all kinds of different flavors of pro wrestling. No doubt. No doubt. And if you like, uh, you know, a little bit more hard-hitting, uh, Stan Hansen type, okay, I'm, I'm with you. I, I, I could take a big plate full of that. I just think that for, for, today's, pro, for today's pro wrestling, there is just no one better. Like, the run that he has had has been simply unbelievable. Um, and just when you think you've seen it all, you haven't. Now, uh, being able to do that on a consistent basis is fantastic. Did you get a sense that, like, here, here's, a, here's a better question. In the history of you watching this product, or any product, how often have you heard such conversation between the commentators of a guy who is going to, he's looking for the bag and our time with him is probably coming to an end. When have we ever heard conversation like that? Oh, I mean, sort of thinking back when, We've seen the writing on the wall for guys like a Kenny Omega or a Jay White. And it feels like their run is sort of petering out. They're kind of half assing it or there's, you know, the, we're not getting as much out of it as we should do. This feels like the absolute opposite to that. Yeah. Like he is just going out of his way to have, you know, personal dream matches, um, you know, little projects where there's particular guys he wants to get over, whether that is in, the States or in the UK or in Japan, it is unbelievable. I, re, I don't think, I know no, you don't have to like him personally. You can think he's a, a, a twat. You might sort of hate his matches stylistically, whatever. Like, like you said, Damon, you have to respect the sheer output effort. Yeah. 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 I, I look, I agree with you, but like I said, like Kevin and Chris, they were talking a lot about the fact that, you know, it's it's becoming quite evident that Will's looking for the bag, and he's you know, getting our our time with him in New Japan is is probably you know coming to an end. And I thought that was very odd to be saying that, and I'll tell you why. Um, one, like I came away from that feeling like we are minor league, and we can't compete with AEW. We can't compete with WWE because honestly, that's the options. 
And the fact that New Japan can't write that check to make sure that he is there. Like, it's not like we're investing in someone who, you know, like what a what a what a pedigree this guy has. What a what a future this guy might have. This this guy is it. We have him. This is he's ours. And we're gonna let him walk. Right. But the conversation was so much that I I kind of felt like is this even going to happen at all? Like, are are we just being fucking not like, is this whole thing a gigantic fucking ruse? Um, I, I just found it amazing that they, 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 I don't want to say harped on it, but it was like, it was a, a true definite conversation. And I'm like, when have I ever heard this before? Um, and that might just be honesty. And it might just be like Kevin saying, oh, fuck it. I'm going to talk about, you know, you know, I'm talking about anything. Uh, who cares? Um, I put in my two weeks. Uh, I thought that was weird. We have a future in in in, in Yoda Suji that is not only so promising and so like the future being very bright. Like we have a guy right now that can do everything that I I, I truly believe that you would ask of him, like. You have a you have a wrestler right now who doesn't have the mileage and doesn't have the bumps and bruises and doesn't and 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 the knees apparently work. <laughs> you know? Like you have this guy right now. Like let's let's fucking go. Like I think he's proved himself tremendously being able to A have a ring presence, B having charisma, C feeling like a star uh, and in ring. And again, dance partner being having the best year um, helps, but that match, if, 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 if there were any doubters or if there were any people that were like, oh, I'm not quite like, I, I can't imagine anyone watching that match and thinking app ah, future's not bright. <laughs> you, know? you know, they have a, they have a, they have a golden ticket, right? Um, I, I just wish that, and I don't know what it would take, but man, just can we, can we just just blank check him, just blank check him. Um, I feel like the decision's already been made, but we have the guy. Like we have the best wrestler in the world in our promotion, and we're letting him walk. And and to me, that is. So like that makes me so sad because this is in a, a Nakamura situation and this isn't an, an AJ situation. Like, like this has been built for months. Like we've been talking about this and I just find it amazing that we can't write that check. Yeah. Spunked it all on a uh, Mercedes Monet. <laughs> right. Right. Who, Okay, now again, and maybe we just need to ask the questions. But how much? It felt like it it did, but I don't know. I l- I would love to see the numbers. I who knows? How much is that moving the needle? Like, how much has it moved the needle? Have subscriptions gone up? Have you know, like, and and trust me, it feels like it's like like when you said her name. I literally had to remember, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, like, it doesn't feel like they didn't mention her name once on the show, did they? <laughs> right? Unbelievable. I don't know. I don't you know. She's plenty of AEW storylines, though. Right. She's sitting in the press box. She looked good. I will say that. Um, I like that hairstyle better than the, the spots, the, the, like the leopard spots. I like that one. Knocking down, uh, but yeah, I mean, where, 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 what, what happened there? What's happening there? I don't know, man. Oh, Tony Khan. Well, she's in. I mean, there's not a huge amount you could do there, but uh, all right. Point still stands. I mean, um, yeah, very sad. Give me stars. Be... Throw me some stars, Joel. I know you how oh, much you God. love. Okay, so, uh, for me, for, for me to call it a perfect match, it needs that stage it needs the stakes so for me it's hard to to say that if it's not like a a wrestle kingdom main event 
maybe a Dominion main event, G1 final, stuff like that. For the spot that it was in, it was perfect. Like, there's nothing that either Osprey or Suji could have done differently to make that match any better. Mm. And that's probably the highest compliment I can pay. I it's, fair. Will- is, is it going to be, a, could, could well, probably will be in my top three. I mean, if you put a gun to my head now, it's Osprey Omega from Wrestle Kingdom, mm-hmm. uh, Best of Super Juniors final, Wato and Titan, mm-hmm. G1 final. This is making a strong claim for getting into that top three. I think it'll be in a lot of people's lists. And I'll, I'll tell you what, and, and it might be recency biased. It's it's in my it's in my top three right now. I enjoyed it that much. I I and and I remember turning this off. I watched it today, the, the show. Uh, and I remember turning it off and thinking, I haven't felt that way in a long fucking time. Like that was like one of those. Whew, that was a fun fucking ride. I haven't felt that way in a long time. So good on them, Will Osprey. <sighs> Got to tip my cap to the guy. He's a fucking monster. Fantastic job. All right. That's that, right? What do you, what do you, th- what do you think overall, show-wise? I thought it was a really good show. Yeah, I think um, it definitely... In, in terms of delivering in-ring quality, the top two matches did most of the heavy lifting there. But no, a really good show. I think it was definitely lived up to my expectations. Yep. Yep, I would give it a thumbs up. I'd, I'd set the bar pretty high for Suji Osprey, and it, it somehow managed to over deliver. Um, they were high for me, but not like like ridiculous high. I, I to me, it it exceeded um, even me going in. That's that's how much I liked it. And anytime that happens, you know, that's that that makes for a fun fucking watch. That's for sure. It it I thought it delivered, and then some, and uh, it made me it made me. It made me more excited to be a New Japan fan. It really did. It, it absolutely did. It, but on the flip side, it also made me a little bit sad. I'm not going to lie. It made me a little bit sad um, knowing that there's a really good possibility that 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 guy who is not replaceable uh, might not be full-time New Japan anymore. Um, all right, before we go, just want to get your quick thoughts on the some of the matches that have been announced for Royal Quest 3. Mm. So we've got singles match El Desperado against Trent Seven. Um, I could do without Trent Seven. He's still got the, the taint of speaking out and all that stuff. I just he, His match with Oku was horrible at the, uh, the Red Row show, so that one's doing nothing for me. Uh, this one, however, Yota Suji versus Luke Jacobs. I don't know if you saw the Luke Jacobs Ishii match from the Repro shirt, copper box. If you haven't, go out of your way to see it. It was tremendous. He he is, I said before, he's Mank Walter. He's like, he reminds me of 2017 Walter. So, Suji against Jacobs. I'm so excited for that one. It's a match I never really considered, um, but I love it. So, I'm really excited to be able to see that one live. Got six man tag Tanahashi, Eddie Kingston, Michael Oku against Hinare, Jeff Cobb, and TJP. Mm. Got a special singles match with Ishii and Shingo. And then our main event is confirmed with Will Ospreay. Defending the uh, US slash UK championship against Zack Sabre Jr. Ooh. You're going to the show, right? That's not the whole card, by the way. There's more more to come. Yeah. You, you're going? Yeah. Yeah. That's a fucking nice show. And, and I will say this. Through all of this, you know, Rev Pro knows where its bread is buttered. Like, that's a fucking show. Um, that should, that's, that's, that's a great show. That, that is a great show. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, uh, to me, I I think I'm more excited for that show than this wrestle wrestle dream show, to be honest. Um, and the wrestle dream show doesn't sound bad. That, that's that's nothing to fucking wave your hand at. <sighs> that that might be that that I think that's going to be a must watch show. Royal Quest. Yeah. All right. Uh, I do have some more questions. I'm going to save them for next week because um, it's eleven o'clock now. I want to go to bed. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know that's not okay, really that's a Rev Pro we're... show, is it? Is it Royal Quest? Is it? Um, well, it is going to be streamed live for Rev Pro subscribers, and New Japan World subscribers will get it on demand. Okay. And I think that's a smart move, to be honest. I think it's good to sort of uh, throw something the way of the Rev Pro subscribers. And I'm, I'm tempted to sign up myself because I was really impressed with what I saw at the anniversary show. 
so that is, um, you know, given a bit of shine to your partners who have done a lot of good for New Japan in recent years and just a really well-run, well-booked promotion with a, a lot of very talented young guys coming through, like Luke Jacobs and Leon Slater and yeah. so and so. Um, so, yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Um, and, yeah, hopefully this can be a launching point for guys. And, again, the fact that Luke Jacobs has been handpicked for a singles match here I think shows that New Japan are interested in him. You know, they're giving him a singles match with Ishii, singles match with Yota Suji. Um, hopefully we can do something with him because he's a, a guy who I was very excited by at the Rev Pro show. No doubt. Maybe we can get a free code or something. Maybe somebody would be generous from Rev Pro. And uh, we used to have one. They gave us one. Did you know that we got one before? Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They give us a code. Uh, they would give us code all the time. I don't know why that's up. Maybe they like Colin. Uh, who knows? All right. All right. All right. That'll do for this week. So redcircle.com forward slash shows forward slash super dash J dash cast. We appreciate all your donations. Please keep them coming in. Help uh, keep the lights on. Uh, Discord link. No, I, I yeah, don't we're not doing this anymore, anymore. I thought, right? No, no. That, so that one's gone. Discord. Okay. Right. Delete Discord. Um, yeah, ProSTs.com forward slash Super Jcast. Thanks, Editor Dan. He, he gets a he shout gets out. We love Dan. Yes. At Lousy Hero 219. Follow us on Twitter at Super Jcast. Thank you everyone for listening. Goodbye. Thank you Cheering at pro wrestling shows in Japan is back, and 2023 is already shaping up to be a big year in the history of pro res. That's why you should listen to the Emerald Flow Show. From the Royal Road to the Green Mat, Paul and Gerard take you into the world of all Japan pro wrestling and pro wrestling NOAA. Not only do we analyze events, but we examine business, who is getting over, what angles are working, or not. Occasionally, we take a look at other Japanese promotions like DDT and Zero One. So if you're looking for more coverage of the world of Japanese wrestling, check out the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network, available on all of your favorite podcast apps. Hi, my name is Tyler Fornis, and I am the co-host of The Good, The Bad, and The Hunky here on the Voice of Wrestling Podcasting Network. Every week, my co-host Fred Moreland and I discuss all the happenings of All Elite Wrestling and everything going on in the universe of Tony Khan. We talk about Dynamite, we talk about Rampage, and we will talk about Collision when the time comes as well, along with all the appearances outside of AEW from all the best talents in all elite wrestling. This is one of the more cohesive wrestling companies in the entire world, and we discuss every intricacy about it, including the unique booking of Tony Khan that is both a huge positive and a major detriment. Check us out every single Thursday here on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network.